playing violent video games makes you more violent. Even if you don't agree with this, it sort of makes sense. If you're constantly immersed in a violent setting, it's quite possible that you start seeing the world through a more aggressive lens. But to make a point, let me take the complete opposite view. I want to argue that violent video games actually decrease violence. To start off, let's look at some real world data from a 2014 study. If violent games did increase violence, you should see some sort of increase in crime after a big video game sale, right? But here, researchers found that every time there was a spike in video game sales, there was actually a decrease in assaults afterwards. Another study found that a 10% increase in violent video game sales was associated with a 0.3% decrease in crime. This effect was not seen in non-violent games. Furthermore, look at other forms of media, like movies. Researchers found that for every 1 million people who decided to watch a violent movie, there was a 1.1% decrease in crime that night. Once again, this effect was not seen in non-violent movies. So, what's happening here? Well, one explanation is that people who have an aggressive personality are more drawn towards violent media. As such, when violent video games come out, these people are staying inside and have less opportunity to commit crime. Now, if this is true, there's still a big question to ask. What about all the other studies claiming that violent video games increase violence? For example, in this review paper, researchers analyzed 136 papers, looked at over 130,000 participants, and concluded that violent video games not only increase violence, but reduce empathy and reduce prosocial behavior. This sounds much more legitimate than the three studies I mentioned. Yet, there's something wrong with a large number of the studies in their review. To illustrate this, let's do a thought experiment. Imagine you wanted to see if playing sad video games led to depression. To test this, you have participants play a sad video game. Afterwards, you measure their level of sadness through questionnaires or maybe by observing their time spent smiling. You crunch the data and big surprise, playing sad games makes you sadder. But would you then conclude that this short-term effect eventually leads to depression? That's quite a big jump. Yet, this is exactly what happens with many of the violent video game studies. In fact, when you look at studies which try to measure the longer term impact of violent games, the data shows weaker and more mixed results. The point is, you can bring up convincing evidence for both sides of the argument, and this is a huge problem. It means that anyone can pick a side, produce a theory for why they are right, and then cherry pick a couple of studies. It's only by actively arguing the opposite side of the debate that you can get a fuller picture of what's actually going on. So, in my new series, I do exactly that. From questioning popular success advice to properly analyzing discrimination, I'll be arguing against the mainstream viewpoints to see just how true they actually are. New videos come out on Sunday, so subscribe for more.